is Neil Magna, Area Sales Manager, FP McCann. So what are the aims and objectives uh, of my session? Uh, is really to, to point out an overview of McCann's as a business in terms of our locations, very important uh, in terms of concrete being very heavy, transportation costs obviously can be increased significantly. It's therefore very important that we try our best to manufacture our precast components uh, as close as possible to the site where they're gonna be erected. Also give you guys an understanding of architectural and structural precast solutions as an off-site system. We're gonna look at some precast divisions and industry sectors that we focus on. Another one that's also been pointed out is benefits of concrete as a material, which is very important. A uh, few, few in there in particular are thermal mass, acoustic, fire resilience, which we're all um, very much aware of uh, with recent events. I do believe that pictures do sell a thousand words. So I'm going to touch on quite a few case study examples as well as I work through the presentation. But one thing you'll see a common thread through all the speakers today is exactly this here about early stage engagement. The only way we're really going to get full advantage of manufacturing offsite is early stage engagement. It's never too early to send an email out with a CGI, an idea, a concept thought, because it's from that point that we then take forward to full offsite solutions, which you see some nice examples as I work through. And at the end, we've got some Q&A. So without further ado, FP McCann's business established in 1979. We have 15 office facilities here in the UK. We are therefore the UK's largest precast concrete manufacturer with a turnover last year of 228 million. As you can see here on the map, all our production facilities are here in the UK. With a great expanse following straight through the country, ideal for picking our production facilities as close as we can to site. Therefore, keeping transportation costs down and more importantly, passing on that transportation saving costs to the end user. You'd be glad to know I'm not gonna talk in detail about all of them because I do only have 15 minutes, <laughs> but I am gonna focus very much on architectural and structural precast solutions. In terms of divisional split, the 16% is the bit we're gonna focus on, but you can see 50% of the business is still very much below ground. And what sectors do these divide into? Hotels and student accommodation are our two busiest sectors. I like to keep it simple and talk about boxes. We mentioned crosswall construction. I think keeping it simple and talk about a box. So again, you refer, you'll hear me refer to a box and that's what I'm referring to, crosswall construction. And I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail about what we're referring to in terms of a box and also the size of the box and also working on what was mentioned earlier on about a hybrid system when we look at the PRS apartments and so on and so forth. But one growing area for us in particular is housing and PRS with a massive sh shortfall of housing. How can we speed that up and how can we become more efficient in delivering offsite manufacturing solutions into the housing and PRS market? Key benefit to concrete, I think the top three are the three buzz ones that we're hearing an awful lot. Thermal mass actually utilizing the concrete itself to absorb heat in the day and release it of an evening, therefore reducing the running costs of a concrete building over any other material. Acoustic performances, one of the reasons we are so busy in airport terminal buildings is for that. It's not just for airborne sound from aircraft, it's also for impact sound as well. Again, lots of tap testing available in terms of results to see the performance of what you're achieving from a very small section of precast concrete. Fire resistant, you're hearing this all the time, more and more post recent tragedy events. Concrete, as I mentioned earlier on, is non-combustible, therefore it doesn't add any fuel to the fire. It therefore aids or reduces the, the, the spread of fire should a fire occur. I'm gonna to touch quickly on three of the plants out of our 14 in the UK. The reason I'm putting these pictures up is one, to show you the size of our manufacturing facilities, but also to show you the investment that we've had at these three, three factories. On the right hand side, you can see a, 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 an image of a, a part finished factory. That is now actually finished. It's a 1.6 million pound investment to house a new piece of rebar bending cutting facilities, which I'll move on to in a second. We've also got new offices in Grantham and also a huge extension that's gonna be happening in the next two years in, in our um, factory in Littleport, ideal for transportation into London. And that's gonna be the UK's largest facade center of excellence. So again, these are not facility extensions we're doing because we have the space and we have the land. This is all as a result of the demand in the industry and to keep up with that demand. We've also invested heavily in advanced manufacturing technologies. These are just a couple of images from our new rebar bender and cutter, a 1.6 million pound investment in our Cheshire plant. This will produce 900 square meters of mesh per hour, fully automated. We don't have a series of guys using links and tying our cage work. We're not buying in standard mesh and cutting out the windows and doors. It's fully automated, driven from our Tecla model. So again, speeding the process up again, 
passing cost savings on, making our buildings more cost effective in terms of production. We then take it to the next level and look at CAD CAM. So what we're doing here is we're looking at casting table. Above the casting table, you've got a projection of light. These beams of light will give the operative working in the, the surrounding areas an indication as to where these mold boxes are going. Where is the window? Where is the door? You could argue de-skilling the job, but more importantly, keeping a very close eye on our QA. Once this panel is cast, the last thing we want to do is realize we've cast the door or the window in the wrong area or to the minute detail of the casting lifting sockets or the air vented brick that runs through the facade or sandwich panel. How the system works, very quickly, crosswall construction, as I referred to, is boxes. Keep it very simple. What we're looking for here is the line loads being transferred straight the way to the ground floor or to the in-situ podium. Noting that all these walls and ceilings do have a class C finish. They're therefore ready for fine stopping and decoration. We're eliminating wet trades where possible on the building. How are we bringing these panels together? All, all designed to the relevant Euro codes and BS810 for progressive collapse. And here you can see the high strength fixed tropic grout where the joints are brought together. Looking at the production facilities, this is a battery mold, called a battery mold because of its cellular light construction. And what we've got here is a panel being lifted out from a high class mold, giving you again a high class finish of concrete, ready for fine stopping and decoration. These walls don't need plastering. You can directly decorate straight onto them or as mentioned earlier on, leave them as an exposed concrete finish. We have a series of tilt-up tables and a whole host of different manufacturing facilities. Moving on to architectural finishes and sandwich panel, which is by far one of our busiest inquiry lines at the minute. There's a whole host of finishes. Again, these have been pointed out throughout previous presentations. Acid etched grit, blast polished, exposed aggregates, very much similar to the Barbican. Or it could be a latex mold detail, giving you some form of simulation of a finished texture. This one here being a, a crumpled paper effect or a brick faced finish. Could be a colored concrete as well, adding a pigment into that concrete, which is not susceptible to do UV uh, deterioration over time because of its, um, its inorganic. Look at a sandwich panel again. This is by far our busiest inquiry line at the minute for a number of reasons. I'm going to talk you through how we make up a sandwich panel. Here you can see an exploded diagram. In this instance, it's a brick face panel. I think the precast industry has many poor examples, even being honest, where we see bricks cast in and what you do see is a series of panels. And we get so many clients and architects saying, we love precast, but we don't want to see panel to panel jointing. So again, I'm going to talk you through how we can avoid that. Talk you through first about how we make the sandwich panel. Here you're looking into a mold. You can see the brick actually being cast in. This brick becomes an integral part of the unit. Don't be concerned about the word brick slip, which has got an awful lot of negativity in the industry. The outer layer holds that brick in. It's integral. It's not bonded on with a two-party epoxy re resin. It's actually cast into the section. It's also independently tested by ourselves as well to make sure that brick adhesion with the wet cast and the brick is sufficient. Bricks all act differently, as you're aware. We've got engineering bricks, which have a low water absorption rate. We have stock bricks that have a higher water absorption. So it's very, very important that the brick that you choose for your project is acceptable to cast into a sandwich panel. We're then pointing the panel through the back. We're then pouring on our, our, our concrete with our rebar, our insulation that was pointed out before. Again, we're carrying out all U-value calculations to determine how thick that insulation needs to be to achieve your desired U-values. Once they're stripped out, again, a whole series of different finishes. Here you can see some stack bonded brickwork. If this was done traditionally, you can imagine the amount of bed reinforcement that would be needed for the stability of the brick. We're therefore not relying on that brick bond pattern whatsoever. It's merely just an outer leaf of the sandwich. Again, windows being installed, nice bit of architectural detail and nice 327 soffit. If that was done traditionally, you're going to need an awful lot of bed reinforcement. You're also going to need some support angles. So you're looking at an Ancon type support. Again, costs per square meter are going up significantly. We don't need that within our sandwich panel. Again, a huge cost saving on a project. Looking at hotels, I mentioned before about how we're bringing these panels together. There's many a poor examples in the industry where you can see panel to panel joints. If you look closer here, you can see how we're bringing the panel connection behind the window, therefore bringing it down the reveal. So you don't read panel to panel jointing. This one here is a Portland Hue fine acid etch finish. It's a Motel One hotel in, in Manchester city center. 300 bedrooms built in just 24 weeks with eight men on site. That's all your internal walls ready for decoration. Your pods are lined and leveled. Your flooring, your stairs, your lift whole core area as well including your facade, no scaffolding needed. Again, ideal for busy city center locations. 
So 24 weeks, just eight men. There's no other material in the industry that could give you that level of finish in that short space of time. There's another hotel currently live on site with, currently lifting at nine days per floor. It's an AC Marriott hotel. You can see here the temporary prop in, the internal walls, the pod recess ready for the pod. This photograph's taken at 8.30 in the morning, same day at 4.30. Again, you can see how fast we're lifting. Windows again installed in the factory. Architectural detailing with nice chamfered reveals, deep overhangs, deep soffits. Again, very much a detail that we're seeing a lot more of. More of a clinical finish in terms of the brick on this one. This is a Premier Inn in, again, Manchester city centre. Another big area for us is student accommodation. Many times playing great because they're going to be clad with a rain screen cladding. Or it could be a nice acid etch finish. And this is actually up for an award, uh, a finalist, uh, and yesterday. So this again is, a, is a, an acid etch finish treated with an Epicuro, again, to protect the light colored concrete over time. And there's some finished photographs of the, of the job. Again, nice chamfered reveal into the window return, a nice deep 400 mil soffit. Looking at the housing, again, this is much of an increased area for us in terms of inquiry lines due to the shortage of housing. This is number one Hagley Road in Birmingham, a very prominent site in the city centre of Birmingham. And as a result of this, we've seen an influx of inquiries. That people can't believe just how quick this is being built. So it's 19 storeys in total. And again, it's nine days per floor. And you'll notice from this to this in such a short space of time. How have we achieved it? Again, cross wall construction. I mentioned before boxes, keeping it simple taking the line loads down the internal walls, utilizing the inner leaf of the sandwich also as a structural uh, layer, taking the floor down. This is a hybrid system. So again, we're bringing in holocore flooring, enable us to span the larger boxes, unlike what you get with a hotel and student accommodation where the box is smaller, we're actually spanning over 10 meters into using holocore flooring. Quick note on that. We're seeing an awful lot of people wanting to look at reducing sectional build up. And you may think that saving 50 mil here and there doesn't make much difference, but we're recently working on a job in Manchester, 22 storeys high. The planners came along and said, no, they're, they're, it's too high, so we need to reduce the height of the building. And when we looked at the detail, the architect did detail the floor build of about 400 mil. That's because you've got your holocore flooring, your structural screen, and your artificial ceiling. With our system, you don't need that. We could have a 175 or a 200 mil solid slab, completely finished, ready for latex and carpet, smoke detection, lighting cast in, ready for painting. That's 250 mil saving per floor. If you've got 20 stories, you've got five meters. So you've got a whole floor of accommodation. So from an investment point of view and from a planning point of view, it does tick all the boxes. So what do we offer as McCann as a business? We offer the full design, estimate, manufacture, and installation. Again, I mentioned earlier on early stage engagements. One thing you take away from today from all the speakers is exactly that. It's never too early to really pose the question, can this be an offsite? solution. Reducing waste, improving quality is very, very important. And minimizing making good. The general overall finish of the product is delivered fast to a high quality. And again, on budget and an awful lot of the time, a saving of up to 40 and 50% in time on the prelims that was alluded to in the presentation earlier. That's enough from me. Thank you very much.